I'm Ty Whitman. I've been meaning to take some time and show you guys how we test in the laboratory for coliform bacteria using the presence absence method and the most probable number method. So let's assume we've gotten a sample in from the field and today there are a number of different ways of testing. Today we're going to talk about this using the color alert method. Color alert method. And so like I said, let's assume we got a sample in from the field. It's 100 milliliters of a sample. Obviously they've been very careful when they've taken this sample. When they've taken this sample they've made sure that the lid was you know not set on anything dirty when they took it down that everything was clean and they take their sample very clean. You seal this up. At the time that the sample is taken they took a chlorine residual of the water. They took the temperature of the water. You have to take the chlorine residual se separate because this sample bottle is going to have sodium thiosulfate in it and that's a chemical that's going to neutralize the chlorine in the water. Why is it important to neutralize the chlorine in the water? Because if there were any coliform bacteria in here, the chlorine in that water would kill the coliform bacteria. So we need to neutralize that chlorine in this water so that it won't be effective, so that if there is any coliform bacteria in this, we can find it. Again, remember there are a number of different bacteria out there. Coliform bacteria is just a general all-encompassing uh, umbrella that we look for and the presence of coliform bacteria itself is not necessarily harmful but it's an indicator of more harmful bacteria such as E. coli. So I've gotten this sample it's come to me it's, I've got it in the lab I've received it, it was refrigerated when it came here. Very simple. I'm going to add reagent to this I'm going to add a Call alert packet to this, and I'm going to be very careful. I do not want to contaminate this. So I would take the reagent, break this open, pour that into the vial, put the lid back on. You guys are going to go, this is simple. I'll put the lid back on that and shake it up. Give it a gentle mixing. And then I'm going to incubate in this incubator here to my right. I'm going to incubate this for 24 hours at 35 degrees Celsius or that would be 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, if this were a real thing, it would be labeled and all that stuff. And so I'm going to come back with the call alert method. If it were to be positive, you would get a bright yellow. And I'm going to grab something right here to show you. This is something with the most probable number that we'll see next. But as you can see, those are very, very bright yellow. If that's a positive, that's what you're going to get out of it. So you're going to come back 24 hours later. And after waiting 24 hours with the call alert method, you have a four-hour window to read that. So let's say it's 6 o'clock right now. I come back at any time after 6 o'clock tomorrow and I can read this, but there's a four-hour window, so it can be read tomorrow between 6 and 10 o'clock. There's a four-hour window. Anything past that, that 10 o'clock or past that four-hour window, then the results are void because you can get false positives and things like that. If this comes out looking like this or really, really light shaded. They say it's clear, but a lot of times it'll come back with a really, really light shaded yellow. Then you're going to get it. Uh, it's going to be a negative. It comes back any kind of a darker shade or any kind of, of uh, dark yellow at all. Then you have a positive coliform bacteria sample and you take it from there. When you're testing in the, sim in the system, when you're testing from a reservoir or so forth, you definitely do not ever want to have a positive sample and that's a given. But there are also times that you know that you are going to have a positive sample. When you are not testing treated water, when you're testing raw water for example, when you're pulling straight for the lake, you're going to know that there's going to be coliform bacteria in that water. So you don't want to test presence absence because you'll always get presence. You might want to test most probable number so you can see how heavy the concentration of coliform bacteria is. In that example, you're going to use, well, we're going to show you the Quantitray method of doing that. And they were nice enough here to let me use their lab to show you the stuff, so I don't want to start tearing into all the materials. 
But the quanta tray is set up basically exactly how the presence absence is. You have your 100 milliliter sample, you put your reagent in it, but instead of taking this right here and incubating it in the fridge just like that, you're going to take it and you're going to pour it into one of these quanta trays. This is a pack of multiple ones. You can see what they look like on the top. It's just a, a, uh, a sheet that has a number of little smaller squares in it. And it'll actually open up at the end right there. You'll peel that open. You'll take this sample and you will pour it down the end of that, into that quanta tray. And then, I'll show you here. So let's say here's something that fits that quanta tray. Here's one that's already back. So you would take that, peel that open, pour everything in the top, then you would set it right inside this. Isn't this smooth? All right, you would set it right inside there and you will send it through the incubator. So it goes through kind of like a laminator type machine and it seals the top of that. It seals that shut. It'll come out the other end sealed. You peel it right off, you label it, and you put it in the incubator. Because it is a call alert method, it's the same thing. 24 hours at 95 degrees or 35 Celsius. We're taking this because we know we are going to have positive results. Or we're pretty confident we're going to have positive results. So, when you come back 24 hours later, again within that 4 hour window, you are going to have positives. And so you look at this tray right here and that all went clear and you can see all the yellow ones. There's a, a number of large ones and there's a number of small ones at the bottom. Now we have to calculate the most probable number. This is really easy. It doesn't need any heavy uh, math or calculator anyway because we have a chart to calculate the most probable number and that's how you do it. So you have, if you look at this, a number of large wells, and this big one at the top counts just as a large well. That's extra because as this stuff gets pushed up, it squeezes out, squeezes out, squeezes up, and this just gives an extra reserve for that extra stuff to go to. So you have large cubes, that's included in the large, and you have small cubes. And then you look at this chart, and you, first you count your large cubes that are positive, any yellowing tint is a positive. Your small cubes that are positive, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine small. And the large, there's a lot more. Let's say one, two, three, four, five, uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. So 42 of the large were positive, and I forgot what I said on the bottom, 9 small. So 42 large, 9 small. Then you look right at the chart here, and this chart, large pot is positives down here, small wells positive there. So let's say 42 of the large, wrong side, because it carries over in case the small ones are done. So 42 of the large, you carry right that over until 9 of the small. You carry that down and your most probable number is 107.6. That is coliform bacteria. Now, you can also use this same tray to see E. coli. We add a UV light to that. And under UV light, the E. coli will... See how close I can get this. Under a direct UV light, the E. coli will show up as white. So you put this tray, this light UV on that, the, the coliform will stay yellow, the E. coli will show up white. So you do the same thing, you count the positives of E. coli in large and small, and you go back to the same chart. And you go right down. Let's say there were 12 large and 3 small. We already had written down our most probable number of the coliform. Now let's say we would go 12 and 4, the E. coli would be 18.1. And I didn't exactly count that. I'm just guessing at it so you don't have to sit here and stare at me. Count twice. So that is how you do lab results for presence absent method and most probable number method for coliform bacteria and then 
for coliform bacteria as well. This one we can also test for E. coli. Incidentally, you can do the same thing for this if you get a positive with the UV light. Sometimes you read this stuff in a book. It's hard to really understand it. Sometimes you talk about calculation of most probable number. It's hard to understand it. You just see that it's a real simple chart that you use and just counting up squares and sometimes seeing these things in person makes it a lot easier. So I hope that helped you all and we will catch you later. Have a good day.